So hey everyone, I, so I've got something today I don't think it'll be very hard to fix, but I've got this inexpensive PA system. I've had it for years, but um, I tried to use it the other day and it wasn't working at all, so I thought it might be kind of fun. I don't have a lot of time tonight, but I thought we'd open up and see if we can figure out what's going wrong. Okay, so I've got my uh, dummy load, just by the resistor there, hooked up to the um, speaker out. I have the scope here, and... Um, I have my signal generator coming into one of the channels and uh, so if I go to turn this up let's watch the scope it starts to go up and at about a volt it just goes nuts and I don't know if you can hear that noise what listen So that's pretty crazy. I'll have to see what's going on. That's funny, I saw it said reverb on the front. It's actually got a reverb tank in it, which is kind of funny to me. So I checked and it seems like there's problems on all, the same, the problem is on all the channels. And so I don't think it's, so it looks like there's just a little op amp in here for each of the channels. And so um, I don't think it's those. And then this looks like it's associated with the reverb. And then this is the circuit here for uh, the power amplifier. But I think first, just to start out, there are some voltages marked on here. And like I say, I don't have a schematic. So that's the first thing to check um, is our voltages. And uh, yes, let's find a ground point. And this should be minus 30, minus 32 and plus 30. So we got good voltages coming in. Which is a good sign. <clears throat> so I'm going to guess that we we must come from from these each of these preamps come around come into this circuit here and then over to here. So I'm going to figure out what the input pins are on this guy here and see if I can um, uh, see if there's good signal getting to the uh, amplifier chip. And so also one thing I think that's important to check is there's all these op amps in here and you always want to make sure that um, you've got I think these regulators over here are probably plus and minus uh, 15 volts and um, we want to make sure that we've got those values, otherwise our op amps aren't going to be working right. And I think that uh, I can check that here. So that's minus 15 and 15. And we can look at the pins of the op amp and 15 and minus 15. So that's good news. So when I'm looking at the op amps, I just look at the <coughs> circuit diagram for them. And you have your inputs here and your output for the one side and then um, output for the B side. So, so these are two separate op amps in the same chip. And so then if I want to, okay, so I have my signal coming in now into this channel. And if I put my scope on the output of A, right here we see a nice signal coming out of it looks like the, the pot is a little bit dicey but then if we go to the output of B 
which is on the other side looks like B is the first stage and A is the second stage uh, and they might be used uh, one of them might be for tone or whatever but what, it, what you're really seeing there is is that at least uh, the signals coming in through here and um, and it uh, so it's coming in off the input panel and then so I should be able to see the same sort of stuff coming out with the volume and um, if I look at the B side here and the A side I have the two signals coming out of here, so I'm not sure what this one's doing. It might be doing tone because it's not affected by the volume. But it might be, um, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I had the wrong thing. So if I look at the B side. Okay, it is affected by uh, the volume switch. If I look at the A side, that's not. But that's okay. So I know my signal is getting to the volume. And then from there, I'm not sure how it gets over to the power amp. But if I look at um, the input for the power amp, which is pin 2. Hmm. It's going to be kind of hard to get to without sh shorting stuff out. Well, I don't think this is the problem, but uh, I don't know if you can see it, but when I move this, this is broken right here. I don't think that's what it is, but I'm going to fix it either way. So I guess one of the things I'm struggling with is right in um, this section right here, which looks like it heads over towards um, the power amp, uh, kind of up and down through here. <clears throat> it looks like if I look at the output of this op amp, I have a beautiful signal coming out, uh, 8 volts, nice and strong. And then if I come out the other side, um, the signal is nicely controlled by the volume knob. Right, so that op amp seems like the one that's being affected by the volume. Um, but I don't see where that signal from the bottom of this op amp is ending up going to that, that power amp. So I'm going to look around some more. So this is quite a curiosity. Look at that uh, 
scope trace, the yellow is, or the blue is the, um, and obviously the blue is about 100 millivolts. Uh, the yellow is uh, about half a volt. And so the yellow is the signal coming out of the, the amp chip. So it looks like we've got a screwed up signal coming in. And if I turn it up, it gets worse. Right? And then I'm hitting the limit of my uh, current limiting bulb. But um, so, so I still can't really tell whether, but I don't know whether. Um, that signal is being reflected back onto the input line. Uh, like I say, I'm on pin three, and that should be the input to the to the power amp. And so, I so I'm gonna go see if I can check. The, do you leave it just like? Whoops! Now it kind of disappeared. Okay, there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the the pro back. And put it where I think pro back here. See, so it looks like it's all the way back here, and then if I come to this op amp, whoops, see that's what's so weird is that the one op amp's putting out two and a half volts and then the B side of it, side of it looks okay and I think this like I say I don't have a schematic so it's kind of hard for me to tell uh, but it looks like this is the good side this should be the side going out to the amp so I'm gonna lift up pin 3 and um, and see if it cleans up uh, the signal going to the power amp the other thing that's weird is the power amp's getting really hot. And so I think it's the power amp, but I'm going to lift up that pin and see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> okay, so I pulled our chip out, just desoldered it and pulled it out. And uh, now let's switch it on and um, take a look at pin 3 now. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. See, that's where it's supposed to look. That's our input. So I really think looking at this with the chip out, the signal coming in looking really nice. I think it's just chip. I think I just need to buy another one. They're about six, seven dollars. And we'll put it in and see if that takes care of the problem. Okay, so I soldered in the new part, and um, let's plug in the speaker, plug in the signal generator, plug in the device. We'll see what we've got. All right, well, let's put a signal through it. Now we're getting a nice clean signal out. It's a little bit noisy, I guess. It might just be my clips. Whoops. They're my current limiters hopping in and out, but here, let me plug it into here.
Nope, we got the similar problem. Look at that. Okay, something's really messed up because I can look at my input signal and I'm seeing all that crazy noise. Okay, so I was noticing all kinds of oscillation um, when I had the board out and I think it has to do with these grounding screws because now when I have the board all in and I have my signal coming in uh, let's see Turn my power on that helps and I got a nice clean signal right up to clipping which is right around 15 volts so let's see 15 times 15 divided by 8 so that's about 28 watts and um, it's rated at 80 watts into a 4 ohm load, so maybe that's a little bit creative, but it's not too far off. And so it does seem to be, there it seems to be clipping again. Yeah, right around 15 volts um, RMS, that's where we're, look at it start to go there. doesn't feel that hot Yeah, it's like it's clipping on every other every other cycle. That's strange, but I don't know what to say. Uh, but that's just completely cranking it. If you're at a more reasonable volume, it's not doing that. Let me. Yeah, so I don't know, so it seems to be working pretty good, but then if I go over to the first channel, first channel has got all kinds of problems, and I think it has to do something like when I wiggle it. There's some kind of grounding problems with that plug, so I'm going to pull that out and um, see if I can uh, find a cold solder joint there. And then if that works, and I think I'm done with this guy. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look too bad. Um, it's here, 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 and here. Uh, this is the only. All three of these are are to the ground plane, um, so I I can't really see a crack in them, but. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm going to resolder it anyway and uh, see if that takes care of the problem. And then on the other side, I'll use a little deoxid on the connector. <coughs> So here's my custom 4080 power amp back in service. Uh, looked like it was just that um, power amplifier chip, the TDA chip, that was bad. 
And uh, but it was it's a it's a very typical repair of trying to trace through the signal path and finding out where that signal's falling apart. It was a little hard to find just because oftentimes when you see a bad chip like that, it's kind of burnt up. Um, but I don't know. We kind of ruled everything out and then ordered a new chip. It was only six dollars for the part, soldered it in. It seems to be back to life. Um, I did repair uh, some cold solder joints on these. That's very typical when you have a PA system. So, uh, you know, if you ever have one of these apart, which is kind of a pain in the butt with all the knobs, just make sure you uh, take a look at all those connectors and make sure they're good. But other than that, uh, if you like the video, please uh, hit like and uh, subscribe and thanks for watching.